Hi guys, welcome to today's session. So we're going to be carrying on with um, some more ink work and looking at a slightly different um, approach to what we did last session. So the previous session was that pen and ink uh, sketch. You can have a look for that on the channel if you haven't seen it already. Um, and this time we're going to be working a little bit differently. Um, I'm going to be using a different ink. This time it's a uh, um, a kind of slightly washier ink that I'm going to be using. I'm just going to pour a little bit of it out now. And I'm going to be making a, a no-turn sketch, um, which is a form of um, Japanese sketching um, with a, an emphasis on creating a kind of split tone um, design, essentially. And I'm going to be working from the little reference that we've got up on screen, so that um, sort of these pieces of pottery. Now, this is a, a useful sort of or a good a good option in terms of um, creating a no tan style sketch because it um, it has a very striking two tone um, design already. So we'll be looking um, in future lessons at maybe how to adapt more complex scenes into a no tan design and how to distill it, but we th I thought we'd start with this kind of simpler version. So I'm just going to be using a kind of medium sized brush, I'm going to be working quite large and just this single brush is all I'm going to be using, dipping it in this uh, wash of ink. And that's basically it, so that's going to be our, um, our tools for today. Um, and I want to basically begin by kind of thinking about the, the large form. So we've got this kind of light shape that intersects up into a much darker shape above. So if I start with just a line that runs down the left hand edge of the image and then just create a slight twist to start to suggest that angle back up. I'm always thinking about shapes, so I've now got this curving curving shape that comes down and meets. As much as possible, I'm trying to use these kind of blocky lines that you can see. Um, partly that's why I've just stuck with a single brush. My ink started to run away a little bit there, so I just tried to catch up with it. Catch that little bit of ink down the bottom there. Had a little bit too much loaded on my my brush. 
Now all of this is going to be dark, so I've kind of just got this one light shape and then another kind of curving light shape. I've got this dark shape just in the center of the the jug. And then that brings us to the plate. So I'm look for how that intersects with this little pot. Again, we're going to be looking for these sort of nature of the dark shapes versus the light shapes and trying to keep everything really crisp.
there aren't too many places where there's an intersection, but you can see, so now we've got this design starting to emerge. Um, and now that this stuff's a bit more in place, it gets a bit easier to, um, to map out the rest of it. So the main thing we've got to then think about is this curve coming around and then hitting this point just for the bottom of the shadow of the plate. And using this big brush um, and just black and white, I'm really forcing myself to just think about really big design elements. It's got that slight <laughs> unintentional drop there, but that's fine. Um, yeah, and so looking at it, I might just extend this shadow a bit further down as well. Maybe flatten this plate edge up slightly. And just go through and start to fill in up here a bit. Um, I'm not using any special paper because um, it's just a sketch, but you could use, you can see there's a little bit of buckling on mine. So if you wanted to, um, if your ink's quite um, thin like this, you might want to use some um, proper watercolor paper. Um, but if you're just doing a, a little kind of study along these lines, it's not crucial that you do that. And you can pretty much just use whatever you've got to hand. Ooh. I'm going to be aware of a few of those drops like that I got. But it's not the end of the world, sometimes they can add a bit of character. Um, yes, yeah, so... Yeah, so there you go. Um, so ignoring those little few drips that I've got, um, you get the idea um, how this relates to the reference. Um, we've done that quite quickly, so I'm going to talk a little bit about something else you can do with Notan. So working in a slightly small little square next to this piece, um, I'm just going to have a look at sort of how you can play around with kind of abstract and kind of intersecting designs generally. So. Let's create another kind of tall image. Just got that pencil there. And let's just have a look at messing around a bit, doing the same thing, but trying out different brush strokes and shapes. So how you could take that approach and think about things like these, these kind of lips, these overlaps. Um, on the pots and things like having larger dark shapes versus smaller dark shapes. So something that we're always thinking about with these sorts of little design exercises are how, how different shapes relate to each other. So in the little still life setup that we've got, you can see it's sort of um, interesting how the uh, the dark shape tends to sit sort of at the top top of the, the image and then we've got this big essentially light shape down the bottom of the composition and then there's some light shapes within the dark shapes and some dark shapes within the light shapes and then this little pot is sort of like a, a kind of intercepting element um, within it. So those sorts of design aspects are something that we can pick up on when we're working from, from a real subject. Um, obviously we've been working quite loosely and then we can start to kind of think about the same sort of thing if we were creating something um, in an abstract fashion. So we could think maybe if we have more dark shapes up the top of this, this box and then fewer down the bottom, we have more light shapes and just a few dark shapes. That creates a kind of logic to the composition. A 
and we can see if it works if it doesn't work we could change it or we could start again so we maybe do one more quick one after this but you can see I'm starting to then create some kind of design um, and these sorts of designs could be used for sort of as abstract pieces in their own right um, or they could be used to start to plan out a little bit for maybe how you would go about doing something like a still life or how you might compose a landscape or how you might compose a portrait um, just working in this kind of black and white fashion is one way of exploring the kind of bold value statement the more extreme value statement of your your image and value tends to be what people look at first when they they see a painting or a drawing um, or if you look at a color painting you tend to see this value statement so even if I was to paint this in color um, one of the main things we'd still be aware of when we first look at it is what the actual value statement is and, and that's another kind of useful thing about NOTAM um, so you can see you've got this little design here and then I can go over here and be even kind of looser with it so I maybe won't create a bounding box just start to build a bunch of shapes Sometimes those shapes might start to become suggestive of something figurative, or you can try to keep them just totally abstracted. You can make them more or less geometric. So these ones are quite ungeometric, but something like this square becomes more geometric. Um, but yeah, just sort of explore. You can try doing sort of thin to thicker brush strokes, depending on the type of brush you're using. You can use dark shapes to suggest kind of thin light shapes. You can connect shapes together um, to start to build kind of larger clusters or to create that sort of balance between large dark shapes or small light shapes and so on that we were talking about before. So if, say I connected all of this together, those, those little squares are going to become light shapes within a darker composition rather than being outlined light shapes or outlined dark shapes. So yeah, that gives you, gives you the idea um, of what we're doing with these sorts of little sketches. So on the one hand, we've got um, this sort of very kind of realistic copy looking at um, light and dark shapes from a subject that we're looking at. And then um, we finish with some sort of experiments and sketches um, using the same approach. So exactly the same thing. We're using just ink and some paper. Um, and as I say, you can see the paper's buckled quite a bit from the the washiness of the ink, but that's totally fine if you're just doing a sketch. Um, so yeah, using the same sort of approach, but with something more abstract and they're, they're interchangeable. So you could start with something abstract and turn that into something figurative, or you could look at a sketch like this. We're looking at the abstract in the figurative. So we've broken down something that's quite representational into just kind of abstract shapes that do to a certain extent still hold together in terms of what they're representing. Um, so yeah, they become interchangeable and this is something we'll look at as we do some more ink videos. We're gonna be trying to look at um, how we can maybe combine uh, ink washes with pen and ink like we did last week. Um, so, you know, covering large sections of tone um, using a brush or a wash and then how we can kind of go over that with pen and ink to then create more 
more detail or kind of slightly different textures to what we can achieve with pen, uh, with brush. Um, and we'll also have a look at using different types of inks in future and using smaller brushes or a range of brushes when painting an ink. Um, but this is a really great exercise to get started with because you just need some ink, some paper and an old brush. Um, I'd recommend a slightly larger brush just because it kind of forces you to be a bit looser, even if it does mean that you might be a little bit messy like I have been here. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this week. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy having a go at this exercise. And um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you guys soon.